Everyone, this is Ross, and I've been getting a lot of questions recently on winterizing our figs, what to do with our fig trees in the wintertime. Even the really small cuttings, you can see right here on our blog, it's figboss.com. And I have a blog post actually talking about the fig tree timeline that we posted on March 6th. And this is really detailing pretty much every step of the way of what to do in our fig season. And this has been a guide, I think, to a lot of people. Um, I just wanna make this available to you guys again to just let you guys know that this exists. Um, I'll put the link to this in the description of the video, but you can see we start out here in March where I think our season begins. And we also then talk about using a dormant oil and um, doing things like feeding them and what fertilizer to use and thinning the new shoots and, and pinching and um, reducing water late in the season to hopefully get our uh, avoid rust, but also to lignify our branches better. And then we get into December when things are really starting to cool down and our dormancy process is beginning here in February. So um, I think it's really important here, guys, to kind of pay attention to a couple things. And I think that's why we get so many questions. But here in October, we're almost in October in Pennsylvania, our trees are still very much growing. Um, well, not really growing, but they're still actively awake and they're still doing their thing. A lot of them still have fruits on them. The temperature is certainly are cooling down and that's a bit of a shame because the ripening speed is really slowing down. And if there's any really remaining figs on these trees, it's kind of a bonus at this point. Um, you know, it's a good time to evaluate which of these figs are actually very late because of how many figs they currently have on them that are green. Um, and still hard. We have other trees here which are done fruiting and believe it or not their genetics just enabled them to really go dormant quicker. They kind of have an internal clock and they realize all right I'm done fruiting it's time to drop my leaves it's time to prepare myself um, for the winter time. Certain trees certainly do this believe it or not my Moscatel Preto this year is probably the first one to do so. You can see all these spots and the yellowing a lot of these leaves are gonna fall off in the next week or so. Um, but what we really want is for our limbs at this point of the season to be completely dormant. We want everything brown. We don't want any green growth and we don't want any half lignified wood. See, this is like sort of half lignified here where it's green and brown. I mean, that's not ideal, but I guess you can kind of put up with it. It's, you know, something you just have to deal with if, uh, if that's what's going on. But hopefully a month ago, you guys watched some of the videos I did on lignifying these branches, because this is really important, getting our trees prepared for the wintertime, slowing down that water, stopping all the food, um, getting our trees ready for frost is really key here, because we're not going to be moving these trees off of the patio in fact, we're going to let a lot of these get hit with two or three frosts before we really put them away for good this winter. Um, normally around Thanksgiving or December 1st is really when they all start to go away for good this winter time. So we have a lot of time. We still have at least two months before all of these will be gone here off of the patio. So what we're doing now, like I said, getting them lignified, slowing down the growth, what I've been doing is actually pinching off some of these tips if they are growing, trying to get them to fruit, believe it or not, or trying to stop that growth, and then getting this growth that currently exists, and really, you should have been doing this about a month ago, to get this stuff lignified. And if, again, this is not lignified, it's not the end of the world, but we're gonna have the highest quality cuttings that way that we can take and sell or even use for ourselves if they are fully lignified. Additionally, if a, you know, a lot of cold comes in, and let's say we're using in-ground trees, and our in-ground trees are not fully lignified, they're just not gonna be fully prepared for that cold weather this winter time. And they're gonna take some damage most likely, and it's just not ideal. So even the in-ground trees, we wanna get these things where it's even more difficult than I think the potted trees, because you can't stop really feeding these, you can't stop watering these. These in-ground trees, we have such a heavy soil, so much nutrients, and so much water that they hold that our soil just enables these figs to continue growing nonstop. So I've kind of taken some measures here 
to pinch, to get them to fruit, to really try to uh, encourage them to lignify by adding silica supplements. We have a product called Dynagro Protect that we, we talked about in a prior video. Getting all these, uh, you know, these branches here lignified with silica, it really helps that process. Here's, here's sort of the issue though of the lignification is that if we get our trees hit with a frost a couple times, the leaves are gonna fall off. You know, that first frost, if it's not hard enough, it's just a light freeze, it's not really gonna do anything. In fact, a lot of these leaves may stay on, you never know. If we do get a hard frost, enough of these big freezes, all the leaves are gonna fall off. And if we don't have any leaves, we don't have any photosynthesis. If we don't have any photosynthesis, our limbs are not going to lignify any further. We're done, it's over. Um, and essentially you're gonna have unlignified branches throughout the entirety of the winter. And that's just not gonna do well. So I think it's really important to pay attention to that. It's all, all the time it's overlooked. Um, additionally, let's see here. So. That's kind of the key is that once we get everything hit with a couple frosts, all these trees are gonna start dropping their leaves. And the next step after that is to start pruning because once they drop their leaves, the sap flow needs to return from the limbs, from the branches, all the way down into the roots. Once there's very little sap flow, if any at all, we take our cuttings that we need to take, put them in the freezer, wrap them up real nice in plastic, and then we should be good to go to actually put these trees away for the winter time into storage. Um, if you guys live in an area where these trees are kept above all winter time, kept above about 17 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna be all right. You can leave them outside 20 degrees Fahrenheit to be safe. But a lot of you guys in, in like Europe, even in colder areas of Europe, you don't get too cold in the winter time and you guys can actually afford to leave them outside all winter. Maybe the Pacific Northwest, a lot of the West Coast can do this, even parts of the South. Um, you can see down here, these are my young cuttings that we rooted and you can see a lot of them don't look that great. These are a lot of them that we didn't, we decided not to sell them. You can see some of them are dropping their leaves and actually going dormant, believe it or not. Um, so these cuttings, I think I've been getting a lot of questions on. We want to let them go dormant as well. And we want to let them get hit with a frost. We want to let them do the same natural process that these trees, these larger trees are doing. Even though they're smaller, it doesn't matter because I have lignified growth here. I have cuttings that I started not a month ago or not a couple weeks ago, but cuttings that were started quite some time ago. So all this wood is already lignified, already ready to go. And this is gonna be a more natural, it's gonna be a superior process for these trees. Every single one of them needs to go dormant. We're gonna have a much better season this way. If I were to take this tree, let's say this is my prized possession tree, it's young, I wanna get this thing inside, I wanna have it grow all winter time. That's not a good idea, guys, it really isn't. Um, let your trees go dormant they will just put out a, a stupid amount of growth the following year because of it. It's a more natural, superior process. And if you bring them inside, they're really not gonna do a whole lot inside anyway. I mean, the temperatures are so cool. Uh, you're not gonna have the right light requirements. They're really gonna do almost nothing. Um, so just my recommendation, bring them, uh, put them dormant and bring them in your storage area and leave them there. Your storage area needs to be kept above even if you left them outside, it needs to be kept above 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Last year on Thanksgiving night, I had a, a lot of trees that we didn't get away into storage just yet. And it was so cold, we had them over in this corner over here. It got down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So my trees actually have survived that. No damage, no, um, nothing died. I was shocked. I thought I was gonna lose a bunch of trees. So, you know, you can really, play around with this. It's not like the end all be all. Nothing's gonna just suddenly die on you, but a really intense frost, a really intense cold, very quickly in November is very, is just really not good. It's really not something you wanna mess around with. Even with the in-ground trees, if you guys are gonna wrap these, I personally like to wait as long as possible 
because we want to have a dry day, number one. We want to have all the leaves fall off. We don't want any condensation. We don't want even the ground to be wet, preferably. We want to have very little condensation that we're trapping in that tree that we're wrapping. Because if we trap in that condensation, we're going to have molds, we're going to have branches that are pretty much dead when we unveil them and unwrap it the following spring. We also don't want any moisture to get in. So it's really important to do it on the right day. But also if we're going to get a really hard frost that comes in like that 14 degrees low, which I was shocked I didn't take any damage from, but it seemed like my in-ground trees definitely did take some damage. Um, what I would recommend is wrapping them, just covering them or even throwing something over top of them. Um, you could put even just a row cover on top. You could put any sort of plastic you have, a blanket, just throw something on top of them, get them through that day, that night, and then um, let them more naturally go dormant and then wait a little bit more time and then wrap them. I think uh, the sooner you wrap, the quicker you wrap, the worse it could be for you guys um, when you unveil them. It really can't, you really can kill them if you wrap them too soon and there's too much moisture and you're trapping that moisture in there. Um, but it's the same process with the in-ground trees. Let them go dormant. We can do any pruning we want after they go dormant. That sap flow returns to the, to the roots and then we can cover them um, at that point. You know, uh, there's not much to this. What I'd recommend also, we talked about the cuttings and I wanna go back to that real quick, is that if you have a cutting that you just freshly rooted, we're talking like two months ago and it doesn't have any lignified growth. It's still growing. That really wasn't a great idea to begin with, number one. But number two, you probably are gonna have to bring them inside. You can't let them go dormant with the rest of these. It's unfortunate, but you're gonna have to take care of that pretty much all winter time. I don't think there's any other way around it. Just take care for it inside. But what I'd recommend is actually if you can find a situation to let it harden up inside with enough photosynthesis, with enough heat, um, then you can put it in a colder area and let it naturally go dormant as if in a way it was outside with all these trees, but in reality it wasn't, but you can kind of trick them into dormancy. Um, what I like to do and where I like to store them is underneath the sunroom. It's kind of like a root cellar under here it doesn't get too cold it doesn't get too warm um, the only issue is though and i think a lot of you guys have this issue and this is really where everyone screws up uh, so pay attention to this this is you don't want it to get too warm in here sometime around uh, april 1st is really when the temperatures start to get too warm underneath the sunroom when we're getting temperatures above 50 degrees fahrenheit consistently they're going to wake up and they're going to wake up in a place where they don't want to wake up. We want to have them wake up where the sun is shining. We can have a more natural wake up process like that. If we don't have the sun shining, we're going to have very lanky, pale growth that's very weak. And that weak growth is going to set us up for a very poor season. So if you guys screw this up, you're really going to regret it. And it's going to be a big learning experience for you. So what I would suggest, if you guys have them in the garage, because you can also throw them in the garage, you can throw them uh, in your cold basement. But if it's getting too warm in there around March and April, you need to bring them outside. You need to do that shuffle. The garage, you can open up the garage door, let some light come in. Um, I Hopefully you don't have this many trees, because if you have this many trees, moving this thing around is gonna be very difficult, but that's something you really need to pay attention to. You could really screw up your season and really delay everything by like two or three weeks. And the whole, everything you did was kind of for, you know, sort of a waste. Um, so that's that. I'm gonna have plenty of questions, I'm sure, come March about that, this entire thing that I just mentioned. Um, <laughs> all right, so the other place I like to put them is in the greenhouse. And the greenhouse is a, a very um, unnatural wake up process that I put them through. I keep the greenhouse heated. I have a heater in there and I keep it above 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter time. I only have to run that for like 10 days of the winter time, believe it or not. It was 
kept above, if you insulate it well, I put a tarp over the top, which kept the heat in nicely. Um, I didn't have to heat it for only about 10 days. So it was pretty nice, affordable. Um, what I also do is I wake them up in March with the heater. And we've talked a lot about that. You guys can even go back and see all the videos on everything I've mentioned. Just go to the time of the year that we we're talking about all this, whether it's in December, whether it's in November, whether we're in the dormancy process throughout the winter time. Um, it's all talked about. It's all gone through in these videos. So that's sort of the video here, guys. Um, you know, like I said, let them go dormant. Hopefully you guys got some lignified growth. Uh, we're going to let them get hit with two or three frosts. We're going to cut them back if we want to take any cuttings. We'll talk about pruning when I do that. That's going to be in December, and I'm not selling cuttings until December. So hopefully no one's asking me and bugging me until then. Um, also, once we take the cuttings, then we can put them away into storage or we can wrap them. Um, this year, we're going to be chopping back all the in-ground trees to about a foot high and we're going to cover them with tarps and other insulation. Um, so that is the video, guys. Uh, check out the blog post that I mentioned. We'll put that in the description. There's more information there. That's kind of like everybody's guide to the season, no matter where you're at. Um, anyway, guys. Talk to you soon. Take care.